Good morning, ladies, and welcome to the Metro North Women's Chosen Conference. And what a great day uh, Christy and her team has planned for you. And uh, I've been praying for this, that um, God would do great things this, this day that you're here. And there's not one of you that has got here by chance. God's appointed you to be here today to do great things. So let's pray over this day. God, you are good. And I thank you today for each lady that's here. I thank you, God, for uh, how you have chosen them and that you have a purpose for them and a plan. And I'm asking today, God, that you would anoint Christy and all of the ladies that are doing breakouts, God, that your hand of anointing would be upon each one of them. And God, today, that these ladies, God, whatever their needs are, God, whether they're lonely, discouraged, whatever it would be, God, you know, and I'm asking, God, that you would come and that you would do great things today. And when they leave here, that it would be a turning point for them and that they can go out and they can glorify you in all things. And we give you praise for it. In your name, we ask it. Amen. Well, good morning. I want to thank some of you. Renee did not introduce herself. That is Renee Schneider. She is the first lady of our district. <laughs> yes, you are. Yes, give her a hand. She has such a heart and dedication um, for women. It was used to be in this section. Her and Pastor Phil used to pastor here, but now they're at the district. And she has a heart now for, for all the women across the district. So we are so thankful to have her. Well, quick notes. Um, thank you, first of all, for being here for our first annual, maybe, <laughs> Chosen Women's Conference. We are blown away at the response to today. And so what that tells us is that this is a need and that women like to come together, worship together, learn together. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Well, a couple housekeeping things. The restrooms are out these doors and all the way to your right, my left. Um, right before you get to the double doors at the end, they'll be there. Lunch will be in the gym. If you go to the restrooms, just walk about five foot further and go through the double doors, walk down that hallway, and lunch will be there. Now, I know that you guys have seen, we have some amazing breakouts, amen? And so what we will be doing, you have the schedule um, in your book or in your bag, and you have the breakout rooms, and on the flip side are the breakout descriptions. You get to choose two of those, they will run twice. So they'll run once in the morning and once in the afternoon, and you get to go to two different ones. Or if you like the one so much, you can repeat it again if you feel like you need to hear it again. Some of us can be a little hard-headed. Or is it just me? <laughs> so you get to choose two. Um, unfortunately, nothing is going to be recorded today. Um, so take good notes and ask the Holy Spirit to help you remember. Amen. Well, Angela, can you bring me that up, please? We have three different giveaways today. The first giveaway um, is what I call my transformed basket. It is my book transformed, um, my book ablaze, a transformed journal, and a transformed shirt. I put a large in here. If you need a different size, come see me and I will get you a different size and then just some other goodies. You got your numbers in? Oh, I'm going to need my glasses to read this. Hold on. 9850189. Come on up. Yay! Yeah. I believe you. I can't see it anyway. Thank you. <laughs> God bless you. Okay. Well, if you will stand and, and prepare your hearts, we're going to go into worship. Um, and can I just say before we get started today, ladies, I just want to encourage you to lean into the Lord today. I want to encourage you just to be 
Um, open to what the Lord would has speak to your heart today. Open to what the Lord may, may want to do in your life. I just want to encourage you. It's you and the Lord today. There's nobody else here that's watching you because I'm encouraging them to lean into the Lord. This is a day, Lord, that we are giving to the Lord. Just lean in and let him have his way. If you want to cry, cry. If you want to shout, shout. We got Kleenexes up here. I just want to encourage you just to allow God to be God today and let the Holy Spirit speak.
Come on, let's just begin to think about how good he's been to us. So my life you have been faithful. Thank you, Lord. And so my life you have been so, so good. With every breath that I am able. Oh, I'm going to sing of the goodness of God. One more time, let's sing that together all my life. And all my life you have been faithful. Come on, every voice together. And all my life you have been so, so good. We know we got. With every breath that I am able, oh, I will sing of the goodness of God. of the goodness of God. Oh, all we want is you, Jesus, holding nothing back from you. Fill this room with your presence. Fill our hearts with your glory.
applause for our worship team who are giving up their Saturday to be here. We thank you. You know, God is so good, isn't he? You know, I, I feel like today the Lord wants to do something. He wants to do something in our hearts. He wants to do something um, in our minds. He wants to do something in our spirits. 
You know, there was a time in, in my life, for those of you, I guess I should introduce myself. I told Renee, I said, I laughed. I said, you didn't introduce yourself, so I introduced you. And then I got up there and didn't introduce myself. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, which I think most of you do, I'm Dr. Christy Lemley. I'm the section presbyter for the Metro North. Um, and it is an honor and a blessing um, to serve the churches and the ministers in this section. I was just reelected, so as somebody say, I did not get out of jail. <laughs> um, just kidding, but it really is an honor and a privilege to serve. But I haven't always been so... Um, deep in my walk with the Lord. For those of you who haven't heard me speak before, you're gonna learn I tell on myself frequently. I don't know any other way to preach. If I'm not transparent and authentic, how can you be? And so I didn't always used to be where I am spiritually. And, and we know I'm not talking about just growing. Like, like I grew up Lutheran and I'm thankful for my heritage, I've never not known Jesus. But there have been times that I didn't make him Lord of my life. And so I can remember walking, when Craig and I, that's my husband, we got married. I remember walking around the streets of Alton before we moved out to the lake, and I was just like, God, there's got to be more. There's got to be more to life than just Waking up every morning, going to work, coming home, having dinner, going to bed and waking up and doing the whole thing over. I mean, I can just remember walking and just praying, God, what is it? There's got to be more. There's, this just can't be it. And in that process, the Lord just kept revealing himself. And then the Lord filled me with the Holy Spirit. I went to a Joyce Meyer conference and, and I'm like, Lord, I'm not leaving here till I can speak in tongues. And I thought, what did I just say? <laughs> I have no idea what I just said, but you know how many, sometimes we say things and after we say it, we're like, wow, that's a, that's a pretty prophetic statement. That's a statement that is yet to come that I guess I'm gonna begin believing for, Amen. And the Lord filled me with his spirit. And he continued to reveal more to me and, and more to me. How many of you in this room know that there's more that you're missing? Ladies, that is what I believe the Lord wants to do. He wants to show you the more today. And it's so important that we allow the Lord to reveal more to us, to heal us from our past, because there is more. We were created for more. You and I are chosen. And it's not just a word, but it is a reality. You know, there was somebody else that was chosen, Mary. And if you have your Bible, turn with me to Luke 1. And if you don't, I'm gonna go ahead and read it. Some of you are moving around, so I will wait. And while we're waiting, I forgot to mention that if you're going to a breakout with that starts with a one, it's on the first floor. It'll be down this hallway right here. And if you have a two, you can go up the stairs or take an elevator and the rooms are all back here. Forgot to mention that. Okay, so Luke 1, I'm gonna begin in verse 26. It says, in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy. Well, see, the sixth month, the angel Gabriel had just appeared to Zechariah and said, your wife who has been barren, I've heard your prayer and now I'm going, she's gonna have a son. And so she is pregnant. God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. So here, Luke is the author of this book, Luke, and he was writing to a gentleman named Theophilus, and he was trying to explain and unfold the gospel. And so it is so important that Luke gives details so that people can know who Jesus really is. And Gabriel 
if we read a little before that, Gabriel says, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. Wow. Gabriel, the angel who stands in the presence of God. It is so important that we grasp what is happening in this story, what is about to happen. So Luke is saying that Gabriel went to this town to a virgin named Mary, who's engaged to be married to a man named Joseph, descendant of David. See, biblically, Luke is lining up all the prophecies that the kingdom of David shall have no end, the reign of David. So now there's this descendant going on. But I love what comes next. It says, the angel went to her, Mary, and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. Can I stop here for a minute and just say, if an angel come to me, the last thing I'm wondering is the words. Like I'm going, what is happening here? I mean, anybody in here ever seen an angel that had been standing in the presence of God before? I don't know about you, but the words that were spoken might, I don't know if I would have actually even heard them. I think I would have just been terrified of what was going on in itself. But I love the Bible doesn't say that Mary was necessarily concerned about the angel, but she said, what can these words mean? Like it was getting the depth of her. What could these words mean? She was greatly troubled and wondered what kind of greeting that might be. Have you ever had somebody come to you and say, oh, you're just so kind and you're so good at what you do. And you're like, okay, what's coming next? <laughs> we all know, right? Especially if you're the person who says yes to everything, you know what's coming. Like somebody is coming to you and you're like, okay, what are they about to say? That's how Mary felt. So if you remember in those moments when people are coming to you, you're like, okay, what do they want? Like that's kind of how Mary is feeling in this moment. What does this mean? But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. And that word favor there is chiris, and it means grace. You have found grace with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. And Mary says, again, she's just told how incredible her son is going to be. And she says, how is this going to happen? I'm a virgin. Like, she doesn't get caught up in, this is great about my child. How many of you want your child to be great and do great things and things like that? She didn't get caught in that. She's like, wait, I'm still stuck back here. Like, how am I going to have a child? See, sometimes we don't understand things and we get hung up and we're like, wait, wait, tell me how, like, how is that going to happen? How? Why? When? We, need the, we know these questions, don't we, ladies? How will this be? God in his grace allowed the angel to answer. The Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age. And she who said was to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month. So the angel is saying, here's how it's gonna happen. The Holy Spirit's gonna come over you. And by the way, in case you want a confirmation, your family member Elizabeth is six months pregnant. Like God is so gracious, isn't he? He is so merciful. And so he's telling, the angel is telling Mary, this is how it's gonna happen. And by the way, here's a confirmation. Your cousin Elizabeth is pregnant right now and then in the six months. And I love the way the NIV says this next line. For no word from God will ever, will ever fail. Can I just say that again? For no word from God 
will ever fail. The ESV says, for nothing with God shall be impossible. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled. Then the angel left her. Father, right now, we pray, Lord, that we would have ears to hear, eyes to see, prepare our heart to receive what you wanna speak to us. Father, I just come against any lying spirits, any manipulating spirits, any controlling spirits, and they must be silenced in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray, Lord, for an open heavens above this place, Lord, that the Holy Spirit will just rain down. In the mighty name of Jesus, we take control of this atmosphere, that the Holy Spirit is invited and will flow freely, Lord. Have your way. In the name of Jesus. See, God chose Mary. I mean, can you imagine? Anybody here visited Israel before? Okay, so you've been to the place, the the Church of the Annunciation, which is over the ground, supposedly, where the Holy Spirit appeared to Mary. And when I saw that place, it was like, wow, like she was really just living life when the Holy Spirit came to her. She was maybe cooking dinner. She was a teenager. She was maybe cooking dinner, maybe washing dishes, maybe doing law. I, I, we don't know what she was doing, but she was just living life when the Holy Spirit came to her. And God chose her. There was nothing she did to make God choose her. And ladies, I want you to hear today that God chooses you. God chooses you, not because of something you've done or something you haven't done or whatever. God chooses you because he created you. While you were in your mother's womb, God formed you. He gave you your personality type. He gave you your height. He gave you your your build. He gave you your passions and your desires. While he was forming you in your mother's womb, he called you. He created you. And he has anointed you and he has chosen you. See, the important thing about being chosen is we don't choose ourselves. You know, I could think of a whole lot more people who deserve to be chosen than me. I mean, here I was, a girl who was the life of the party, found love in all the wrong places, and yet God is so gracious and merciful that he said, I look beyond what you have done. And I am molding you and shaping you because I have chose you for such a time as this. Each one of us is chosen by God. Each one of us in here has a purpose. There is such power in purpose. As a counselor, for those of you who don't know, I also own a counseling practice, at least for a couple more months. And... um, And one of the things I hear people say when they would come into counseling is, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And some of you in here today might be feeling that way. Well, we have some wonderful breakouts that that can speak to that today. But here's the thing. Whether you recognize what that purpose is or not, you're still chosen. And God's call is irrevocable. He doesn't change his mind because of what you've done or what you haven't done. You know, God loves you so much that he had people form a women's conference just so you would be here today to hear exactly what he wants to speak to you. And he invited 180 other people to come listen, right? He loves you that much that he wanted you here today to let you know that you are chosen. Jeremiah 29, 11 says, for I know the plans and thoughts that I have towards you. Plans to give you hope and a future. We are all chosen. And the first thing that we are all chosen for is to make Jesus known. Whether it's in your home to your children whether it's in your workplace, whether it's in your community. See, each one of you in here, if you go to a church, you are definitely chosen to reach that community. 
And your church needs you. The people need you. See, I love what Pastor Abby said when she said, we are a church body that we can come together so that the hurting, the lost, and the helpless can come. And you know, even sometimes that's us, right? Sometimes we are the lost and the hurting and the helpless, and we can't do it alone. But if you and I aren't walking out our purpose of being chosen, then who's gonna do it? Who is going to encourage? Who's gonna pray with? Who's gonna tell them about Jesus if you and I aren't? See, in Revelations 12, 11, it says, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. We all have a testimony. Have you been telling it? Have you said, look what Jesus did for me? See, so many times we get uncomfortable with, we don't know what to say to people, right? Anybody else here feel that way? Sometimes we don't know what to say to people. We don't know when we're talking to somebody who's not a believer, it's like, what do we say? And I wanna encourage you today that you've been chosen to say what God has done in your life to the person that is sitting in front of you. See, being chosen comes with responsibility. Mary had to say, I am the Lord's servant. So in order to be chosen, for in, in order for that to be something powerful, we have to surrender to it, amen? See, being chosen doesn't do any good if we're not willing to surrender to it or to say yes to the Lord. See, we carry the promise of Christ in us with the purpose God has ordained for our lives. See, Luke tells this story so that people can see the big picture. The big picture of Jesus and how he was born of a virgin. So he was birthed, he was, the Holy Spirit came in. So he is without sin and he's in the lineage of David. So Luke is telling that this is part of what God has spoken about. That's the big picture, that Jesus came and died on a cross and was raised again so that every sin, everything that we have done can be covered by the blood and washed away. That is the purpose for the story. That is the big picture. But the individual story is Mary. And you are the individual story, carrying the purpose of Christ to others. Ladies, can I just get real? We need to let go of insecurities. We need to let go of doubt. We need to let go of feeling like we're not worthy enough to be chosen and say, God, you have chosen me. I'm gonna begin walking in it. Whether I agree with it, whether I think you picked the wrong person or not, God, I'm gonna begin just walking in what you want me to do. We need to let go of things about us. You know, I was at a, a school of the spirit conference that was going on with a whole bunch of pastors. And I travel with Dr. Carolyn Tennant sometimes. And I was there and I mean, the whole room was filled with pastors. And as the worship, it was coming to a close and they were getting ready to transition. And there was this moment and the Lord began speaking to me and said, he said, speak this word out to my people. And I thought, Lord, I don't want to speak in front of everybody. Like I'm sitting at this little table over here. Like this isn't about me. I'm not one of the speakers. I don't, you know, I don't want to just say something and, and, you know, it, okay. For those of you who may know me, it's not uncommon sometimes in a church service for the Lord to give me a word. But at this point in time, I was having a struggle with the Lord because I didn't want to be chosen in that moment because it was uncomfortable. I was going to have to step out of my comfort zone. And I had to go, God, is this really you? Like, you want me to say a word for all these people. You want me to speak to them with somebody else's on the platform. And I'm like, Lord, I just, I, maybe this isn't really you, Lord. Maybe this word is just for me. Anybody else? Lord, maybe this is just for me. Maybe I don't really need to contact that person and tell them something. 
And the Lord, as I was having this conversation back and forth with the Lord, which probably lasted 30 seconds or a minute, it wasn't that long, but in my mind, it seemed like an eternity, right? And finally the Lord, I'm like, Lord, I don't wanna make this about me. I don't wanna put any, I don't wanna shine the light on me. I don't want any. And the Lord's like, Christy, you're making it about you right now. (laughs) Have you ever had those moments where you went, oh. (laughs) Like, I don't want to be chosen but now I'm arguing about being chosen. I feel unworthy for being chosen, but now it's all about me with being chosen. And I said, okay, Lord, forgive me. I don't ever want it to be about me, but about you. And so I stood up and started speaking. Granted, it only lasted maybe about a minute, maybe two at the most. And then I sat back down and I'm like, oh Lord, okay, I did it, I was obedient. Now, Lord, the results are up to you. And my mentor turned and looked at me and she said, you were supposed to do that. And I was like, thank you, God, that confirmation, kind of like Elizabeth, my cousin is pregnant, right? But here's the thing. Sometimes being chosen can be uncomfortable. Sometimes being chosen can be scary. Sometimes being chosen wrecks our life and completely alters the direction like it did for Mary. You know, I can remember being in my counseling office back in 2003, I was minding my own business. I was worshiping the Lord. I'd given a donation to the WIBI, the radio station, and they sent me this CD called The Prayer Jabez. (laughs) And so I just started singing, Lord, expand my territory expand my borders. And I think he did too. Isn't it amazing how sometimes God sets us up? Yeah, you're laughing because you know. And I'm singing and, you know, I'm just going on. And, and again, at this time, I'm still Lutheran. Nothing wrong with being Lutheran, but I'm not, I don't necessarily understand the gifts of the spirit or things like that. I just know I'm worshiping. And all of a sudden I start having a vision. And then God speaks to me. It's the second time in my life I audibly heard the voice of God. Here I'm thinking I'm gonna be counseling till I'm 45 and then I'm gonna retire and travel the world. Okay, I am now 50, retiring from counseling, but I'm traveling the world preaching the gospel. My whole life was shifted. Because when you're chosen, God makes that choice. And was it easy? Absolutely not. When God chose me, I got asked to leave my church. I lost all my friends. And my husband about left me because he didn't marry a minister. But God miraculously showed up to my husband And I woke up one morning, he's standing at the edge of my bed. I don't have time to tell his whole whole story, but I was standing, he was standing on the edge of my bed and said, guess what? I know you're doing what you're supposed to be. Like, thank you, Jesus. (laughs) Right, right. But see, God makes a way. When we are chosen, he will make a way. Our gifts will make room for us. And so in that moment, My husband was completely on board then and God gave me some wonderful new friends and I found a great new church in Cornerstone, actually, which is where I started and Pastor Phil and Renee were my pastors. But why do I share that story? I share that story because sometimes being chosen isn't easy. But ladies, the time is short. Jesus is coming back quickly. There are people outside of these doors who are lost and hurting and they need to know Jesus. And if we, the chosen ones, don't go tell them who will. There's individuals all around your churches that need to know Jesus. And so we need to embrace like Mary did and say, I am your servant. See, Paul states in Galatians 1, 15 through 16, but he who had set me apart before I was born. See, you're not an afterthought with God. See, though father and mother may forsaken you 
and told you you wouldn't be worth anything, that you're no good, you were a mistake, you were an accident. God says, from the beginning, from the foundations of the world, I formed you. And I made you just the way I want you to be. And Paul says, I was set apart by God's grace. And I love what he says in the rest of that verse, and I did not consult humans. Mic drop. How many times when God speaks something to us or something about us, we have to get acceptance from others? Ladies, we don't need anybody's approval but God's. We don't need anybody's approval but God's. You know, I I say God has such a great sense of humor because Um, The first couple times I started going to presbyter meetings, the only people who would talk to me were the people like Pastor Phil and the others I worked with. (laughs) Other people would say hello, but nobody would really talk to me. I think because I was the only female 99% of the time. And people were afraid to sit by me. They were afraid to talk to me. I don't know. I'm going to be careful what I say. Um, I'm not sure why. I think because there's this thing that we have to be careful with men and women, and we totally do, okay? But it's okay to talk to people. And I can remember multiple meetings going to my car and leaving in tears, going, God, this is hard. You tell me to keep going. And so, God, I keep going. And the only people who will talk to me, sometimes even acknowledge me, are the ones that know me from the church and I kept going and I kept going and I kept showing up they couldn't get rid of me so they made me their leader (laughs) crazy (laughs) right so ladies what I want to say once Mary got pregnant she couldn't turn back And once we are chosen, we can't turn back. No matter how difficult it is, ladies, we got to keep showing up. We got to keep speaking up. We got to keep worshiping. We got to keep praising up. We got to keep doing what God has chose us for. We got to keep going no matter the difficulty of the road and the journey that we're on. When we're chosen, we don't get to choose the route. We just have to say, God, I'm your handmaiden. God, I'm your handmaiden. And I have to share that when God said, Christy, I need your yes for me to become presbyter, because I could have not let my name to stand. And the Lord's like, I need your yes, Christy. And the Lord just said, there's somebody in here that, he, that he's gonna ask you for your yes today. The Lord said, Christy, I need your yes. I, I won't. Have you become presbyter without your yes? And I can remember I was with Lisa and we were worshiping at a church and I just started weeping. I'm like, God, why me? Like, I don't feel worthy. I'm not a pastor of a church. Like, this doesn't make sense. And the Lord said, I don't need you to know how it makes sense. I just need your yes. And so the angel didn't say to Mary, I'm gonna tell you, every step by step, exactly the whole plan, the whole map of what it's gonna look like, this is what's gonna happen. You're gonna be overshadowed, you're gonna be pregnant, and this is what your son's gonna do. He didn't give her the whole roadmap of what her whole life was going to look like. Because when you're chosen, you say, I am your handmaiden, have your way in my life. And we need to just say yes to Jesus. For some of you in here, You feel like your past disqualifies you. And if you have a past, I'm gonna be like Paul, so do I. And it didn't disqualify me. And it doesn't disqualify you. See, I think sometimes we use our past of our past sins, our past failures to prevent us from saying yes because we're really just scared that we're gonna fail. And so if you have a past, which we all do, maybe yours is pretty lurid. Maybe, maybe you've done something so horrid that you feel like God can't love you. 
I'm here to tell you today, not only does God love you, but God has chosen you. And we need to stop believing the lies of the enemy that says we're not good enough, that we are not enough. Because here's the truth, ladies, God is enough. God is enough, but you and I are chosen. We're chosen for more. We're chosen for greater things. We have to believe in faith and just quit questioning. We must embrace being chosen. But see, I can't embrace your chosen for you. You have to embrace it, just like I have to embrace it. The second thing I want to point out is that God was with Mary. I pray today that God will place dreams and callings and promises deep within you, that you know that you're chosen, but that he is with you. I love that in the Bible when the angel says, Mary, God is with you. See, God doesn't call us and then send us out all on our own and say, go for it. He doesn't say, I'm gonna choose you to lead this ministry in your church, but you figure everything out. I mean, if you stop and think about Mary, she was unmarried, she was engaged, but unmarried and pregnant. The shame that she must have experienced. And an angel had to appear to Joseph to convince him to stay with her. See, sometimes when we're chosen, other people don't understand. Other people may not even agree. Well, who do you think you are? I remember when I began sharing the calling on my life with others, because again, I I didn't know where to go or what to do with it. And I spoke, um, Pastor Phil referred me to go talk to somebody, another woman in ministry, and and I love her dearly. And, And as we were talking, I was telling her about my calling and she said, Christy, I wouldn't tell too many people that. And I was like, okay, why? In that moment, it discouraged me. It discouraged me because it's like, well, this is the first time I, other than my pastor that I'm really telling anybody And and I need you to say, okay. I need you to say, great. I need you to say, wonderful. But what I got was I wouldn't tell too many people that. But as I pondered that longer and as the Lord unfolded that, unpacked that for me, do I have any processors in here where somebody tells you something and you got to think about it and you got to be like, okay, what did that really mean? I see some people laughing, so yes. So I had to process that comment. And the process of that comment got to the point where we have to be careful who we tell and what we tell them so they don't stomp on our dream. She was protecting me. And so there are some of you in here that God is calling you to do something and maybe you told the wrong person and that wrong person said, who do you think you are or it's impossible or it will never happen. And I'm here to tell you today, bring it back in and allow God to breathe life into it because he is with you. It doesn't matter if anybody else agrees with you, you keep on with God. Just like Mary walked in shame, she had to walk in shame, people whispering, people talking, but yet she kept going. And I wanna say the same thing to you. There are some of you in here who know you're chosen. You're walking on that path, but you keep getting stuck because others may not agree. And I'm here to tell you today, it doesn't matter what other people think. All that matters is that God is with you. People don't have to understand Only God does. And the third thing I want to point out is that God did the work. How many Marthas do I have in this room? How many worker bees do I have in this room that you do everything, you like to stay busy? Now there's a place for Martha. I'm not knocking Martha. But today we're gonna be Mary's right? You don't have to cook. You don't have to clean. You just have to sit and absorb. Ladies, Mary asked questions. How can this be? Because I'm a virgin. How can I have a child if I haven't done, you know, what you need to do? 
And it's okay. It's okay to ask the question sometimes, how? But we can't get caught up in the detail or the answer of the how. Right? Mary just said, I'm your handmaiden. God is the one who did the work. The Holy Spirit overshadowed. See, we need to realize it and embrace not only that God has chosen us, but that God wants to do the work. Hallelujah. So what does that mean for us? That as women, we have to stop striving, analyzing, trying to make things happen, trying to make things work, trying to see the big picture and just go, here's my step, Lord. I'm your handmaiden. I don't know where you're taking me. I don't know what this is gonna look like, but here we go. And in your lives, what does that look like? What that looks like for you is that maybe the Lord is saying, start that Bible study with your children. Maybe the Lord is saying, step out and help with that ministry at church. You don't understand it. You don't know how it's all gonna work out, but you just say yes. And you say, Lord, I am in your hands. You have chosen me, Lord. You figure it out. One of my favorite things I love to say to the Lord is, Lord, this is your issue. Not mine. If you want me to do something, tell me what you want me to do. Otherwise, Lord, you need to work because I don't want to get involved in something that I don't need something else to do. Anybody else in here? There's, I don't need anything else to do and nor do you. So when we say, Lord, yes, let him take it from there. We don't have to figure things out, nor do we have to be people pleasers. Can I say that again? We don't have to be people pleasers. We need to do what God has asked us to do. And if others don't like that, or they want us to do something different, or surely God told you to do it differently, we have to stand strong with God with us knowing that we have been chosen to do what God has asked us to do. Whether literally that's at your job, God has called me, he has chosen me for this position. See, everybody in here is a minister. Just where you do it is different. We should all be doing it in our church though. Amen? So you have to stand strong in that God has chosen me for this job. God has chosen me to volunteer for this ministry in the church. God has chosen me to do nursery. And I said, yes, and I feel like I'm supposed to be here. So I'm going to love on these babies. Because as I'm maybe loving on these babies, the parents are being healed and delivered so that this child can grow up in a healthy home. Right? But we just say, God, here I am, have your way. And God does the work. We don't need to do anything other than say yes and step when he tells us to step. Do you need power, more power? Do you need more boldness? Do you need healing? Whatever it is in your own life, God says, I will do it. Nothing is impossible with God and no word of God shall fail. So if God said it, God will do it. If God is asking you to step out, not only is he with you, but he will accomplish that for which he has sent his word for. Isn't that beautiful? That as Mary was just going about her own life, maybe God speaks to you in the shower. Maybe God speaks to you when you're cooking. And maybe God has been saying to you, I want you to forgive that person that has hurt you. In that moment, you were chosen to forgive. Maybe God is saying, I want you to start a new ministry of encouragement. And I want you to reach out to people who don't have any friends or appear to not have friends. What will you do? 
Maybe God is saying, I want you to be the face of your church and I want you to be a greeter because you have a smile that lights up the room. And other people, when you walk in, other people feel loved and welcomed because when you smile, the Holy Spirit does the work of drawing them in, right? Ladies, there is so much potential in this room. There is so much power of the Holy Spirit in this room. Imagine the lives of how we could populate heaven if each one of us said yes to Jesus. Because God doesn't stop calling. He doesn't stop choosing. So then what's the difference? The difference is us. We have to want more. We have to long for more of him. We have to be willing to get uncomfortable. We have to be willing to be inconvenienced. We have to be willing to say yes. I am your handmaiden, Lord. But here's, here's the good thing. It, it's not up to you and I. Results, whatever God wants to do is not up to you and I. Because he says in Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit saith the Lord. It's what he wants to do. And he'll do it. He will do what only he can do. And I love in 2 Chronicles, when the, the king was surrounded by enemies and he called a prayer and a fast and they cried out to God and the Lord had a prophet stand up and say, this is what the Lord wants to say. The battle is not yours, but it is the Lord's. Stand still and see the deliverance of God. There are some of you in here that you are fighting battles because you are chosen, but it's not your battle to fight. It's time that you stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. You may feel God has come against you or your family, but God is saying, let me take care of it. You just stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. The other thing that the angel said to Mary was do not be afraid. You know, as women, I think we can get intimidated by other women. Just keeping it real. We like to compare ourselves. Well, my calling's not as big as her calling or she's called to do this and I really want to do that, but God's not opened the door for that yet. And then we get discontent. You know what I'm talking about. And I wanna encourage you today, just what the angel said, Mary, fear not, for the Lord is with you. Sister, fear not, for the Lord is with you. So we're gonna be doing Mm -hmm. Um, I know that I'm, I'm not part of the schedule or anything, but when I came in a little late, I just felt like God needed you all to hear this. No matter what you're going, <laughs> no matter what you're going through, God is with you. And I know that you had said that, but I, I don't know about you guys, but personally, I'm going through a hardship. And I feel like at least half of you are. And God is with you. Like you had said, Esther 4, 9, I think. Perhaps you were born for such a time as this. Your community, the people around you, your family, your home, whatever it is, don't be afraid to step out and speak. Because no matter what, 
Yes, the world may turn its back on you. Yes, you may lose some friends or some family. You may fall out of touch, but there is a reason. And I just, I can see that half of you are thinking in your mind, yeah, and that's good. God is there and he, he's trying to guide you. Just follow that path. Amen. Amen. I just love how God works. Amen. Amen. Thank you for sharing. Because that's exactly what the Lord is speaking this morning. And that's exactly what I was about to say. <laughs> Although I've already said some of that, but we're getting ready to come to the altar time. And I'm gonna begin wrapping it up. It's not easy. And the reason I shared part of my own story is to show that it is not easy. And if you're going through a difficult time today, we're about to open up the altar. How many of you believe in altars? We're gonna open up the altars. And if you are struggling, I want you to come up here, not quite yet, I'll tell you when, but I want you to come up and I want you to say, I'm struggling, I need prayer today. I need to know God is with me. That was the second point that I talked about. God is with you. Some of you need to recognize that you really are chosen and that it's a hard road and that maybe you will be rejected. Hello, I lost all my friends, but God gave me some more amazing friends. Ladies, it's just you and God today. And sometimes being chosen means you have to relocate. Sometimes being chosen means to, when you're obedient to God, you have to say goodbye to something you love to step out into the unknown. Some of you just need to realize and embrace that you really are chosen and let go of shame and let go of guilt and let go of your failures and things that you think disqualifies you and says, God, Help me to believe that I am chosen. And if you're going through difficult times, you need to know his presence. If you're dealing with fear or anxiety or depress depression, you need to know that you are not alone and you, need, you may need just to come up and say, I just need to know Jesus is near me. I just need to know that he is surrounding me with his presence. And maybe you're here and you're like, Christy, I know I'm chosen and I know God is with me, but I've been waiting. I've been doing things in my own strength because I'm tired of waiting on when the answer is gonna be. Maybe you're praying and you're prodigal and you're like, when God, when? And maybe you just need somebody to pray with you and say, you know what, I'm just waiting. I'm waiting for God to do the work. Whatever your need is today, I wanna encourage you to come to the altar. If the prayer team, my prayer team and the speakers can come forward. And Renee, if you wanna come pray, that's up to you. You are favored by God. Ladies, you are favored by God. So if you need prayer today, the altars are open. Don't leave today. Don't leave this morning. There are women up here who love you and want to pray with you. Father, we come to you right now. Father, I pray that your Holy Spirit would move. Ladies, if you want prayer, begin to come up. 
Father, let your Holy Spirit move.
We're still gonna stay here for a couple of more minutes. So they're gonna continue to play. We're not leaving yet, ladies. Maybe there's there's somebody here, maybe you're like, should I go forward, should I not? It doesn't seem like it's that big of a deal, but, but then there's somebody also in here, you are struggling right now. You are struggling with God, not with a person, but with God. And you're struggling surrendering everything to Him. Like you know him as your savior, but you're struggling with this one issue and completely surrendering it to him. I just wanna encourage you, we're gonna stay here for a couple more minutes. The altars are gonna remain open. We're gonna keep singing. I will formally dismiss, so don't worry about getting out of here, we will do that. But we just need to stay here a couple more minutes because ladies, we're not quite done yet. Let this be a place where you long to come as you make a way for your love let these hands be clean and this heart be pure blameless as the bride you're coming for in 
teachers, these breakout speakers. Um, if you guys want to go ahead and head to your rooms, and then I'll dismiss everybody so you guys can get there first. <laughs> Again, first floor ones are right around this. Go out their door and come around. The ones on the second... Huh? Oh, okay. And the second thing, another thing, not the second, another thing I forgot was we have a photo booth out here. Take lots of pictures, put it on Facebook or Instagram and hashtag chosen. And um, so do that. They're going to have plenty of times throughout the day, but you might want to do that. 1045 is when the breakouts begin. So read through, check which breakout you want to go to. And then after breakouts, we'll go straight to the gym for lunch. So God's blessings, ladies, and have a great time in your breakout. <laughs>